Hello, I'm George Hayes, and this tutorial is going to be on how to set up code blocks uh, with the Mean GW compiler and SDL 2.0 to make use of it. And this is the code blocks environment here itself. And I'm going to show the project. It just opens a very basic window. And so let's get started. First thing you got to get do is go to codeblocks.org and click on download. And then click on download binary release and scroll down and take the mean GW setup here all right not the one that says user but this one and sourceforge.net is where I download it and it'll have a pop up here in a second after it gets past our timer and there's a download now I've already got it downloaded to save us some time and go ahead and run it and since I have it installed, I'll just run through part of it. And you're going to do the very basic install. Agree to the, the agreement. Uh, click Next. And then click Install. And use the default directory so we don't have to make any changes. All right. All right. So once you've got that installed, you can go on to the next part. Go to libsdl.org. And we're going to click to download version for this compiler, and that's going to be the SDL development 2.001 or 2.01 and Ming GW Targ.gz. You're going to download it and download it into the C and make create a directory called SDL and C, and please download it into it. And that way, we don't have to make any changes to figure out what you have as far as your setup versus this one. And then unzip it or decompress it or you know extract it into this directory whichever you choose to call it and you'll create a directory like this one here I had a previous version also so right now it's this one and because of my previous setup there are some issues which is why I'm redoing this video so all right so it's going to create this directory here now we're going to also need these two other directories up here and I'll show you where to get those we're going to go to libsdl.org again forward slash projects though forward slash I didn't see a button as far as back on these pages here to get to that and I'm you just would have not looked at it properly but anyway what we want is to go into SDL image down onto here and grab the one from GW target GZ again and you're going to do the same thing for mixer and you're going to download those into the same C SDL directory and extract them for here and get these two sets of directories uh, anyway once you have that done you're going to go into your settings all right under your code blocks once you bring it up yeah you know, for the first time then click on compiler click on search directories and you're gonna have to add these here in alright and you're also gonna have to add these in it's not too hard because to add these in if you set these all into the same directory that I showed you you're gonna click on this you're gonna click the top one alright because that's for the 32-bit compiler this is for 64-bit compiler and when I get the 64-bit set up correctly then I will sit here and create a video for it alright so then you click on include and SDL and 2.0 control C like that and then you can just come down here and click add control V and paste it as far as in there I've already got it in so no sense of me doing it but then you also need to lib for that same version so click add there control V back up until you get rid of include and type in LIB all right and then enter it in and do that the same for all three of those directories over here you're going to need to do it for image right to grab it like that the same way and you're going to, sorry you're going to also need to do it for your mixer and grab it and paste it in as far as the same way as on that also, all right. Once you sit there and get yourself a project set up, all right, and we'll go ahead and close out of here for now and do a temporary project. Uh, let's see, 
close project first time you go to set up a project you're going to create new project empty project go and we'll give this project name um, temp1 for now or whatever name you want to do it go through standard setup and everything click on the settings and so forth to make sure it should be in there as you, you're going to see you'll have to the search directory is in there also uh, there's another part we're going to have to do as far as setting up this and it's this first line here needs to be put in the line underneath you can ignore because this is for OpenGL and we're just doing the SDL in this video so minus L Ming GW32 which is probably already in there uh, minus L SDL2 main space minus l sdl2 minus l sdl2 underscore image and minus l sdl2 underscore mixer all right all needs to be added in on that first line or you can set them in multiple lines but that way at least you're copying me on here okay so refresh again you're gonna need this first line in then you're gonna need the search directories for the compiler and linkers in, and those changes have to be in and this is your basic you know, how you get and start your project now we're going to go and close this project and I'm going to open up my previous project where I've already got this done and we're going to sit there and create this but before we do this we're going to sit there into that project that we did mine under SDL you're going to copy your SDL DLL and your image in mixer in and zlib in and for now as far as into this and as you go and use different stuff you're going to need other DLLs added in I'll show you where to find those right now if you put your stuff into that C directory SDL like I told you all right And click in here and go under here and you will find your DLLs under your binary right here is your primary SDL DLL all right and if we go back into here for um, your images all right you have a number of libraries here Zlib you'll need for decompressing you know your PNGs and JPEGs and you'll also need those if you're going to be using it to grab JPEG and stuff in you're going to need the image DLL if you're utilizing it all right so you're going to grab if you're using this and most and then using these this one you'll be the one you start with and then if you start using these other two you're going to need this and this all right and of course you get TIFF and stuff like that but anyway those are where you find your image ones and obviously your sound and mixer is right here and you get your MPEGs and your OGG and stuff like that up here so you can add those into your projects as you just as you use those in your projects all right and you're gonna actually copy them into your project directory as I had done and sorry that's great if you're gonna run it run your project like this if you're gonna run your project this way you know from this functions in here that's okay but then when you go to sit there and use it outside of this let's say um, go back here and you want to run it from here you're gonna have to actually include it into these directories here so if I go back let's go ahead and just do it real quick see there's an error with it all right but now if I go back to here and I probably don't even need the restroom control C right now because I haven't got anything else in there there project comes up all right so you'll need it as far as that way 
Okay, now actually setting up the program. This one is fairly simple. I've got an include sdl.h, sdl image I'm not using yet. I technically could leave that off. Include IO stream, and then that's just for holding my includes. You can do it differently if you want to put them directly in the directory. Then I create a class as far as for my game class, detect whether it's running a window reference, render reference, and event handle. All right, then as far as oh, tr trying to think of it anyway for, for when it creates the game it sits there and you know, automatically runs this part here and then on execute um, when we start it goes into here then initially initialization load content uh, this for when it first starts up what stuff we're going to do like um, what functions we turn on and so forth and then loading content it's just keep it all separated in different things event handling uh, loop calculations or anything that goes on such as moving AI and stuff and then render as far as what when I want something to display like if I have a car that's you know driving through or a person and so forth it calls its own display thing it brings it into here and it all right and then clean up as far as clean up on it and we'll take a quick look so game just sets window to null and running to true all right and that is started when we go in main and it creates the game all right and then returns the game on execute so on execute then comes in here and runs this all right and it goes to initialization here and initialization creates a window all right SEL create window the name of the window upper left corner and width and height and then that the window is actually visible. All right, render is created here. All right, you pass it along the window handle as far as into this uh, SDL accelerated, and it's synced. All right, and if there's an error, it returns it. Very simple. All right, jumps back, comes in here. Okay, so your primary game loop is this while running. All right, I'm sorry, this here and it pulls for events if there's an event it goes on event all right and event right now the only thing we got in it's when you click the little x button on it and close the window down all right on loop would go to here like i said before that's where i would handle like my ai updates cars moving whatever else you, know, you can all you know run those through here and on render right now there's nothing in it also at current currently then clean up there is a bit of code in there not much uh, it cleans up the render get rid of it gets rid of window and then quits very simple uh, so again if we sit there and we look at this and we run we get this all right now you do have this here and if i remember correctly you can go into projects build options and let's see I'm trying to remember where to shut that off at uh, may not be there build properties probably let's see target Okay, console application right here. Sorry. Now we'll take a look again. All right, so that's project target options. And we're going to sit there and change that to GUI application. And that will turn that off. And click OK. Rebuild. And we have to force a rebuild up here. All right. Because it thinks everything's built. Apparently, the little option doesn't show up. And when you see it this time, it doesn't have any other screen. Close it. All right. So now we come back up here and properties, build target, set this to console application, set that to pause on execute, OK. And that way we can use at least that at screen for displaying error messages while we're debugging and stuff like that. And there it is. All right. And that's the end of my first tutorial for you as far as on SEL 2.0. Hope you enjoyed. And please like and thank you for watching. Bye.